Hello, everybody, and welcome to the webinar. This is um, everything to do with the, the Oak Sound Sooth Live, uh, available exclusively on the Avid Venue SXL. My name is Rob Allen. I'm the uh, product manager for Live Sound at Avid. We have a really distinguished group of people to talk about this plugin. Um, and I'm going to start by introducing you to, to the panelists. Um, the first person I wanted to introduce you to is uh, Sean Sully Sullivan. Hey, Sully, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm pretty good. I was going to ask you where you are, but I know where you are. But but tell tell the uh, the people in the webinar where you are. I'm currently enjoying a day off in Madrid, Spain, out on tour with Roger Waters. That's right. Uh, so I, I got the privilege of seeing Sully's show last night in Barcelona, which was sensational. Sounded really, really good. So congratulations on that, man. Thank you. Uh, we got Oli, Eric. Um, Kiskinen, sorry, I've been practicing that all day and I've just went blank. <laughs> <Oli. Very good. laughs> from from OX Sound. Uh, Ollie's the, the founder of OX Sound, the, the big brain behind Sooth Life. Uh, welcome. Thanks thanks for joining us, man. Thanks. Uh, and I nice guess you're, you're in the office in, in Finland, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Right in Helsinki. In Helsinki. You've got Avid Purple in the background, which is oh, very corporate of you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I've got my uh, esteemed colleague, Robert Scoville. Looks like a blurred out enormous dome behind you, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's kind of, we got a load in day here in Charlottesville. So, uh, you know, hopefully we'll stay quiet here for long enough for us to do this webinar. So, yeah. So, who are you mixing? here with all these guys. Who you uh, back for a really short run with Kenny Chesney. So, we're doing a set of about 20 arenas over a few months here. Great. Yeah, and then um, last but definitely not least, my oldest friend in rock and roll, probably Mark MC Carlin. How are you, man? Yeah, we're all good. Looks like you're at home. Uh, yeah, uh, I've got ten days off. We're in the middle of a, an arena run in the US with Muse, um, so I'm back home in Ireland in Dundalk. Uh, this is our studio, Black Mountain. So you know. Day off means work, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. Not a real day off, but it's a nice day off, right? You're sitting behind a lovely yeah, desk no, and some it's, great it's, speakers. It's, it's beautiful work. At, yeah. Beautiful working up here. So, yeah, all good. Yeah. Well done, man. All right. So, I'm going to start off with some questions for Ollie. So, Ollie, um, we're all super excited. Everybody on this call obviously has, we've all been using the Sooth Live product at our concerts. Um, and we're going to get into that in a minute. But Maybe just give us some background. So, you know, how long is Sooth? How long have you been working on Sooth? What's the background to Oak Sound? Give us a little bit of the history of that. Sure. Um, Sooth, Oak Sound was founded in 2016. Um, I was a student in Sibelius Academy studying music technology at the time. And they taught us that the way to get the good vocal sound in a in a procession is to to go through each syllable of the vocal line with an audio suit or EQ and cut out anything that that that's offending with a fairly fairly sharp cue and that uh, we heard that many of the top engineers were doing that so I started doing it myself as well and quickly found it to be very laborious so um, I also have background in computer science and DSP so I started to look for an automatic solution for that. It took me a couple of years to achieve, but but I basically made the plugin for myself and and push it out the door, see if the markets would like it, and we've been very or I've been very grateful for the for the reception that it got originally because it has allowed me to grow a company around this. Uh, originally one product, now there's more of them, and soon one even one more one more sooth for the world. Um, yeah. Well Thanks very much for for your your work on this. We're all you know we've all been using it. We're all delighted with it. Yeah, glad, I'm glad to hear it. Even though, yeah. Um, um, regarding regarding Sooth Live and how we got here, uh, already in 2017, I always wanted Sooth to be available for live sound because I I've, I've always felt that that would be even more useful um, area for the for the sort of processing that it does. Um, so it's been in the works. It's been in the back burner for for what is it now? Five years, six years. Yeah. But um, it did take a couple of iterations to go through to finally land here. So we've been working on it 
for for SXL for I guess like three years now already. So it's it's been a long long process and a lot of fine tuning. No, absolutely, but, we've been in beta for like a year now. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and all all of the guys on this call obviously were part of the the beta. Yeah. That's why they've been using it on shows. Yeah. I, I tell you one of the questions that comes up all of the time when people when I speak to people about Sooth because. I'm like a kind of proud grandfather, you know. I'm always telling people how great it is, and they should get involved. Um, so what? So what? Just, just spell it out. What's the difference between what Sooth Live does and what a, you know, like a dynamic equalizer or a multiband compressor does? What's, what's the difference? What's the secret sauce? Right. Um. Yeah, that's a good question, and it does get asked. Um. Sooth. Uh, when you when you think of think of dynamic EQ or when you think of a multiband compressor, what they typically have going on under the hood is that they have some sort of, you specify some sort of frequency and you specify some sort of threshold, some sort of gain um, that, that once you go past this level in this frequency region, you start attenuating or, or, or boosting. And the thing that we always tried for with Soothe is that uh, it tries to deduct those things from the signal, from the from the timbre and from the features, the sort of mathematical fe features of the signal itself, so that you save time. Sort of you control the in a in a way like a meta process of of what it should be looking for, and it does the it automates the the actual selection process and tries and how to do it so that the the tone doesn't set, change or the timbre doesn't change too drastically. All right. Um, thank you. Um, Jenny, you guys want to jump in with some? Anybody got a question for, for Ollie that's been using it? Um, Sully, I know that you've been working really closely with OX Sound. Uh, you've sent some uh, presets and stuff that are now in the uh, now in the software. Yeah, you know, I was, people ask me the same thing. They're like, why are you using that over, you know, a multiband, this or that? And, you know, my, my answer is always is because once you set a threshold in those, if you have that peak or that frequency you don't like that's lower than that your your current processor won't get it where soothe will adjust threshold because it's looking for the resonance and not based on a you know a, a threshold that you set and so it's really it's really intuitive to go yeah you know the three and 4k are bumming me out on this mic all the time not just above a certain level and soothe will auto detect those frequencies those resonances and go after them at any level which is makes it you know it's just so seamless you put it on something and and to based on the depth and the you know sensitivity controls you really can affect like how it works to go after those things you know earlier or later and it, it's just game changer for me in every single way you can imagine yeah it, it feels more surgical right it's, it's you know it's, it's almost like a um, happening in a kind of very transparent way so i sometimes hear people using a multiband compressor and and you know changing the, the 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 way that people sound like almost like they have a speech impediment or something but but with the sooth it's so specific and it's dealing with just the specific resonances that it's, it's kind of less of a broad brush right that does that make sense yeah for sure that's sort of um there's uh, especially with Sooth Live, there's two things to it. Like you can use it as a with a, a detail setting up. You can use it more like uh, like you would use the studio version of Sooth Two. Uh, it becomes more, very transparent, very sort of looks for specific resonances. But we've also felt when designing the product because it's been fully made for the live sound market and fully fully made for the for the live sound engineer. Is that there's also it can be also used more as a as a multiband thing because there are uses for that as well when you when when you dial the detail very low, so it sort of you get the same same artifact free processing the transparent processing but it becomes more level dependent as well so we felt that there is also that sort of use case for it that would be very beneficial for the live sound market. Sure, it really is. Um, so MC, you you've been um. You were on the beta team as well, right? So you've been working with it. I mean, I know you worked in it in the studio first, and then and then you, you yeah. joined. Uh, yeah, tell me, tell me your, some of your yeah. experiences with it. Yeah, I, I think it's kind of near. Yeah, it must have been quite a, a, close to the start of the beta. Um, I used it last year with Snow Patrol. Yeah, that was the first um, outing that I had with it. And just, I mean, I was quite familiar with the, the concept, having used Soothe in studio quite a bit. 
but uh, you know much like Sully once once I applied it to the uh, in the live domain it, it became a game changer for me as well um you know like all of us we had to do that little yeah you know adjustment in our minds that this is not a you know it's not a dynamic eq it's not a multi-band that's not what it's doing and it's you know when but when you marry it with some of your you know, the tools that you use all the time you know it, that that that's where its power can really shine as well i sometimes tell people that the uh the sooth is what you're not hearing you know it's it's the thing you don't hear yeah um so yeah, it's it's been fantastic. And then you know when Muse started up, it was it was an absolute no brainer to continue the beta on that. Uh, actually, that's one thing about the beta is I never in one show had one iota of an issue. You know, even at the very early stages of the beta. And as you know, as us, us as live engineers, nothing spooks the horses more than a crackle or a pop here or there. But the whole way through the beta, everything was absolutely stable for me. Yeah, that was the extraordinary thing. I, oh, yeah. I, I think we all went through the same kind of journey where we were like, "All right, I'll try it in the afternoons in the in the virtual sound check and see yeah. what I, see what I think about it." And then got to the point where I was like, oh, "I really want to put this in the you know, I really want to put this yeah. in the game." I, I went in, I went in quite early. I must admit, <laughs> I didn't uh, wait I didn't either. I was like, like just went. I for think it. yeah. I think I was ready to accept any punishment I might get because it was helping out so drastically if it didn't. But yeah. my, same with me, same experience. No issues the whole entire level. You know, we had, what, three different beta versions and not one of them had, it. you know, showed any problems no. for me. Yeah, we've spent a lot of time making sure that there shouldn't be anything like it's very robust in every way that we could have imagined. Just just to be safe, I guess, because we haven't really had any issues. But... but uh, Personally, I because I've been using it the very cutting, bleeding edge versions on, on gigs myself as well, and I've always been a bit like, oh, <laughs> can I do it? But but sort of I felt anxious to make sure from the from the design point of view already that nothing can happen, that there is sort of sa safety limits on everything, that no nothing can blow, or so it's it's been in the that's one of the things that's been uh, very arduous as well to to make sure that everything is. Re reliable and and that there is no sort of ways to divide by zero or do anything like that to make sure that it's very stable so we spent a lot of time doing that sure uh can i don't can i don't know uh robert can you tell me some of the channels you've been using on like input channels or something like that maybe chris you could throw up the screen so people can see what we're actually talking about yeah, I, I, you know, you asked the question earlier, you know, what is the difference between it and dynamic EQ? And I mean, honestly, it took me a little, a little time to process it, uh, no pun intended, using it. Uh, and as I started to explain it to people, you know, the kind of the nuance of it is that as opposed to like dynamic EQ, where you're, you're targeting a specific frequency. With Soothe, you're targeting, targeting a range of frequencies, you know, so you know, as your as your target shifts over time, you know, so does soothe. It'll so, it'll change right with it. So, that that's primarily for me. That's the big big difference of it, where you can set this range on it, and over time, it is, you know, going after the things that need to be gotten after on that, whether it's a vocal or whatever. And I think some of the inputs I'm using it on that have had the most impact on it is things like mandolin. Uh, things like fiddle, you know, it, things that have an acoustic pickup on them, where when you're in a loud environment with a PA system, that PA system is creating overtone, an overtone series on that instrument. And it just completely eliminates that process. It, it's just absolutely fantastic. You know, I mean, it just keeps the thing sounding so natural. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, what about you, Sally? I think I think you've been used on some buses as well, right? Can you, you talk talk to some of that? Yeah, I, I typically put it on like my my aux send to my reverb for my vocals because I might not want to take the consonants out of my vocal going into the reverb, but I might want to take, you know, the consonants or the harsh, you know, the attacky type bits going into my reverb to not excite my reverb in weird ways, you know, that might tend to get tails off of S's and C's and K's and T's, you know, that kind of thing. And so by having it on a bus, you could really bury those those frequencies and not affect your overall vocal sound that you hear through the mix. But what goes to the reverb can be really tailored and really shaped to, you know, manipulate the reverb like you've never been able to do before. You know, when when you send 
you know, especially with a, with, you know, in a studio with a really high end condenser and a pop filter and all everything in your, in your working in your favor, that's, it's a lot easier, but the way we do it, this, you know, there's background bleed, there's P there's all kinds of other junk in there. And you're using compression drivers to get the signal to the back of a room, yeah. which tends to make things a bit obnoxious. And you wouldn't really want to go after that on your input because you still need the phonetics. And, but to a reverb, I've, I mean, I've, the, Gooey is like buried on C's and K's and, you know, T's and stuff on consonants. Sometimes they're really in your, re, you know, even D verb, which a lot of people are like, ah, oh, you know, that old chestnut, you know, clunky D verb. You can make D verb sound like, you know, a million dollar reverb just by tailoring what goes into it. Yeah. It's amazing to be able to shape things that way. Yeah, I agree on that one. I, I, I've done exactly the same thing. It, it's almost like having the, like a next generation Abbey Road filter, right? I mean, where it's, like normally you would just you know low pass all that top end off of there, but now you can be way more selective on it. it. It's way way cooler to use it in that sense. It's great. MC, what about you? Can you got a couple of examples of of the kind of things you've been doing with it? Well, uh, you know, straight out of the gate, um, overheads, guitars, you know, uh, you know, coming obviously Snow Patrol and especially Muse dealing with quite a extreme frequency content and changes of frequency content um that was the first you know game game changer as it were for me on that front but then you know like all of us the, the longer we've had it you know that the, the mind keeps spinning and you keep finding new applications for it uh one recently was um on the Muse show obviously we're doing a lot of media feeds social media feeds etc cetera, etc cetera. um so I'm sitting a soothe on my ambient group. So like the crowd noise, et cetera, et cetera, the sit a soothe on that. And it just takes care of so many issues, like an auto mix kind of function. Um, so that, you know, and like all of us, you know, every week that goes by, you go, oh, you know, yeah. the case uses just keep it. I mean, it has obvious case uses in, yeah, you know, it was quite interesting to hear Robert's uh, uh, experience with acoustic instruments, you know, on, in the studio side, I'd always love soothe on, orchestral you know inputs it took care of so many issues there um live i haven't had any circumstance yet to use it on orchestral stuff because we haven't had any but um yeah it's it it keeps i keep finding uses and, 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 and it's great hearing the other guys like the ideas they're having and once we get it into the you know out into the wild you know that's just going to keep expanding yeah, a, a fascinating I, I, one that I'm waiting to try live is how to use the side using the side chaining to create yeah, vocal yeah. space, yeah. Uh, especially with thick uh, electronic um, program. That's one I'm looking forward to. But yeah, it's like when we get it, you know, it's obvious uses. It does so well. It's it's I can just can't wait to see what the unobvious uses are as well. Man, I, I'm telling you, it's it's an absolute game changer on a couple of inches. And I know we're going to use that word a bunch here, but live banjo with a pa system oh, live yeah, bazooki, go, yeah. <laughs> bazooki with a pa system and it's just magic i mean it, it's like it just how loud do you want to get it you know it's amazing absolutely yeah. amazing wow. yeah that's good yeah you told me earlier uh, mc about the about the uh about using it for the for the ambient mic so so you got a bunch of microphones around around the building to to to, to record the the yeah. crowd sound and normally you have to fiddle about with that you might have to do a little bit of work on it a bit of eq in and then you you summon all of that into a, a stereo group presumably and then you, you you summon that into the recording just to get the ambience of the of the gig into the social media and so that's exactly. A, yeah exactly yeah. yeah it's a really Real really clever use of it yeah yeah taking out all the rumble then, when you uh, don't need it and, thanks know. mc i'm going to be trying that one in about an hour here thanks for that one i appreciate <laughs> it there you go I, I, i'm gonna i'm gonna try and get the band to hire a banjo player so i can use your ones <laughs> <laughs> i'd like to hear that a banjo player with muse so that's i'd pay to yeah, see that yeah that, that's worth yeah. the money right there <laughs> i have you saw last night rob the end of my set is a marxophone a accordion a dobro uh there's a melodica like on and on and every single one of those inputs in the end of the show is just everyone's got sued on it yeah they had the marching drum they walk out in front of the pa they go yeah, through the crowd in front of everything they yeah. go yeah in front of the pa they go out into like backstage and it's, they've got a video on on them backstage right and it, it, yeah the sound just just was ridiculous you know yeah um just kept going you know, all the way backstage uh, 
at some point you just got to not be too proud to use it. Right. I mean, you can't kind of fall into this mindset of, Oh, I don't need to use all this processing on it, whatever, you know, it, it either sounds better or it doesn't. And it sounds better with it on there. I, it, mm. I don't know how else to explain it. So, um, yeah. Ollie, explain it. Why does it sound better? What have you done? What's the little... <laughs> yes, please tell us. Ollie. Come right. On. Um, well, what it tries to do is, is, uh, it, as it looks into the time brain, it looks for excessive energy. It looks into the to resonances, the excessive energy, and it tries to take that away. So, essentially, how to retain a time brain while still reacting to uh, resonances in a way that that uh, at the same time st the time brain st stays the same, but but reduce the obnoxious levels of certain frequency ranges and especially in live sound i found that um since the the performances are always more dynamic than in studio like in studio you have you you can really you can prioritize the mic placement and you you don't have pa systems running and, and all those things you don't have to pull a, or push a miniature microphone into between the flaps of a saxophone and hope that it picks up something but in live sound you don't get those luxuries you get you go with what you get um so you typically have uh, an optimal microphone placements that that are too close to the body of the instrument that we've just learned to to live with those and and try to manipulate those things with say eq but but the thing thing is that what well, like same with vocals is that that once you start singing or playing the radiation pattern from the instrument changes depending on the tone so you have uneven like when you play a scale you get uneven balance for each of the tones so sooth tries to uh, compensate that that sort of effect and that makes mixing with it easier i found it personally to I, I mostly mix music that has acoustic instruments and miniature mics dpas is that it, it makes it makes it easier to mix since it controls those sort of uh, dynamic changes in the timbre in in the tone of the vo of the instrument when you when you adjust it accordingly so I guess that's why it's, it sounds better. You still get your creative freedom. You still get to use your EQ for boosting the, those highs or boosting those lows or doing whatever you want. But you don't have to take care of the sort of you don't have to use the EQ so much for the, for trying to trying to chase those dynamic changes in the in the sound source or the the combination of the sound source and the microphone. That's the the sort of main main idea behind the the process for Source Live. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd say you succeeded there because I find myself using way more EQ just for sweetening as opposed for surgery. You know, I don't, yeah. it's like, I'm not a, not even using EQ on some of these instruments to attack it tonally. It's just to make it sound even better. I, it's just, it's an amazing transformation in kind of the thinking patterns when you hear an instrument now. So nice to hear. It's quite interesting as well as it, 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 it's not replacing anything in your favorite signal chains. It's a compliment to the favorite things in your signal chains, you know. I think that's some, something that it's a new tool, you know. That that really, ha you know. So we, we, you know, we all have our flavor choices, and uh, you know, we like it certain EQ for a certain thing, and it really lets us keep doing that and doing it more so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, the 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 show I was using it most on was uh was in a immersive 360 degree immersive and as you know object based um you you tend to do less corrective eq and and, and, and compression anyway because the, the each audio object has a space and and that the, the lovely thing about soothe is, is it was a kind of busy show things were flying around and stuff is i could just throw it at the you know the, the backing tracks for some backing tracks from you know 25 years of albums all recorded in different formats and it just kind of kept everything in its place in this nice little audio space in the mix and uh, it just saved me a lot of time and a lot of energy i wasn't chasing eqs around the the room i was having things pretty flat and pretty um uncompressed and just leaving them a quite natural sounding which which is where i tend to prefer things to be yeah and we all know with live sound we're so far away chasing really gets you nowhere you know you're you're way behind what happened trying to oh there's a problem and you go at it but it's already happened you're 90 feet 100 feet from the pa you're way behind and seven soothe just like okay i know this is going to be my issue and you set the sensitivity in the you know the frequency range and just forget about it and just get on with pushing faders and and doing what you do and not have to worry about the the mess of chasing because you're behind you can't keep up 
Yeah, personally, I've found that that the most enjoyable part for me in live sound mixing is doing the balance. And with Tooth, it's easier to do the balance because the, the sound sources are already sort of behaving. You, you, you get this sort of safety net in it. Yeah, 100% there. I agree. Yeah. Somebody, somebody said to me the other day, I see it was my boss, right? She said, um, he goes, oh, yeah. He goes, it's like less fixing, more mixing, which is it's a kind of... So I thought that kind of great, you know, not that we're going to use a cheesy uh, marketing I, phrase. Ali, but... there's your marketing oh. right there, man. You got it. That's free. Yeah, you got that for free. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a good one. Scandinavian cynicism. Uh, no, I mean, but that's the whole point, right? You're doing less corrective EQ and dynamics and you do more, yeah. you know, more just getting in the moment and enjoying the music. Yeah, it tries to also remove the sort of as... as... It, like like I said, it, the, we still have our own preferences, like when you want to add the flavor, but it, it does remove, or I found it to, to remove, especially in acoustic instruments and vocals, the need for the sort of bread and butter EQ, uh, EQing and the bread and butter compressor, because it's sort of doing those both a bit. That's sort of a, one of the differences with Sooth Live and Sooth 2, is that Sooth 2 uh, tries, tries not to be a compressor at all. Sooth Live tries to be a bit when it when it's needed because of the dynamic nature of live sound that it just makes mixing a bit easier if, if it takes to those popping s's off or if it takes those sort of uh, sudden mic positioning changes that that start to sound odd quickly if it even slows out um or the sort of a capsule resonance on a, on a handheld mic or something sort of get that one one tone when it pops up and, um, and that's a really important point right that that sooth live is a completely new plugin is is yeah. is obviously it's based on sooth 2 but it's yeah but it's it's remanufactured right it's been a, it's been yeah, a it's long fully, process yeah it's been a long i think we're in the sixth revision with with sooth live at the that moment it's very there the, there's the design aspects of it like what how should it work and what should it do but but even behind or before those we had to take into account the how to cut down the latency from the process in the in the first hand and and how to how to what when when you start cutting latency you basically start adding or making the refresh rate higher and when you re make refreshing higher or the the refresh rate higher you start to increase the cpu intensity or the, the cpu load so how to keep the cpu load down or at the reasonable level what what to how to make it feasible to have on your system any sort of system uh, while still keeping the latency down, that's been the sort of tug of war that I've personally been chasing for three years now with this, with this, like even even since I have, I have, to, the I have to say that I have to say that's one of the stunning things about it is how efficient it is, um, how little load it's placing on anything, uh, yeah. you know, and, uh, which which leads us, you know, to be able to use multiple instances of and yeah. have throw it on groups and things. It's not something that you're going, well, maybe I can have four of them and that's my lot. It's just, it's, 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 it really is incredible how efficient you've made it. Actually, another yeah. thing on that, it's, it's quite incredible how, I don't know how you did this in the design process. Soothe works straight out, you know, straight out of the blocks. You, you don't necessarily have to adjust anything. It'll do the job. But then within the controls and within the parameters of the controls, You've got so much scope to kind of go further, um, so that that was quite it, you know. Because later you you put Sooth an instance of Sooth, you open it with. I mean, I know we've all done our presets, so I know we've all learned how to how to focus it. But you know, just straight up Sooth does so well. Yeah. But then the the, the parameters that you've given and the and the controls that you've given um, have created so much scope as well. So I mean, that was that was that was an incredible bit of development as well. That's yeah, yeah. It's it's good to hear. Um, under the hood, I think it has, can't remember exactly anymore. Twenty or thirty parameters, and each of those parameters that you see is controlling multiple ones. So that we we try to go through the most typically used cases that you would want to have, and the sort of typical sound sources that you would have, and make the each of the parameters go through a path in that sort of a complex space of of how to. How to control the process so that we get all the sweet spots to get all the all the flavors and that yeah. that has that's the thing that's taken 
a lot of time. That's why we had such a long beta, is to to refine that constantly to to try to get all those specific. Like when you think of a process like Sooth, you start to think uh, about what you should be able to do with such a processing. And if you go on a slap a plugin in in that sort of situation, and and if it if it's not able to do that, even though you have the mental model of it, they, that's sort of a bummer. So we have to make sure that it actually doing those and, and it, that it's intuitive how it's doing it and when it's doing it and what sort of settings you should be using it with to, to achieve the things that you want to achieve. So. Yeah, and, and from the Avid end, we had to actually, there's going to be a software release uh, 7.1.1 that comes with the Sooth. And um, we had to, to do some serious GUI work to, to make our um, GUI, our general user interface, the screen you can see behind me. Um, to make it quick enough and accurate enough to 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 show the actual work that Sooth was doing, so uh, forced us to, I see, <laughs> improve yeah, kudos our. To your, kudos to your to your devs. It was it was great that that we finally got it. Yeah, we I think we uncovered something like Sooth specifically uncovered something that that was a sort of a bottleneck, but it's now you got it all fixed and it's been perfect ever since. So it's lovely. Yeah, that's that's a guy called Valentin. See, called. it's true. Yeah. Sooth they, makes they everything go. better. See, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so okay. Um, so uh, the view I'm seeing, I'm not sure if, if if we're sharing the screen so that people are seeing the, the things, the parameters that we're talking about as we're going. I'm just seeing the. I can just see all of the people that are talking. Oh, there's Chris Lambix throwing it up now. All right, so let's so let's let's have a look at some of these these parameters. Um. MC, do you want to talk about some of the stuff that, that, that you know, the typical thing we would do, I guess, is we've got these, the, the colored dots are the, the frequencies, right? That, um, and that's, we point Sooth to look at this specific group of frequencies and then we can, uh, and then we can narrow or widen the, the area that we're looking at. What, what would be your kind of workflow, MC, if you woke up to for the first time on, on, on an instrument, where do you start? Well, um, like I alluded to it, Ollie, uh, the the initial preset sets you up quite nicely. Actually, it sets, you know, it's 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 um, you'll see it generally has a biasing. I mean, I always think it as as a kind of a biasing. So you can see, like usually as live engineers, that frequency range between two K and four K is usually the first thing that's gonna, you know, be upsetting yeah. the apple cart, as it were. Um, so you're kind of set up straight away for that. Um, Generally, what I'll try to do is I'll use the low and high pass to kind of, um, you know, bring the focus in to kind of where I'm going. You know, it, obviously, this is incredibly input dependent. Um, so if it's, you know, that in, in instance with the ambient group, you would leave it all open. Um, if I'm looking at vocals, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm tend, you know, generally my resonance is below. 200 are not not what's freaking me out there so i'll tend to focus in first um then and just I'll, just be clear the know, filters are not affecting the sound they're not filtering the sound they're just filtering no the no, attention, no no this, right? this is yeah. yeah and that's that's something you've got to get your head around as well this is you're seeing almost i mean ollie will probably correct me on some of my inaccuracies but it's almost seeing the shape of the process um i'll quickly go to just dial in the depth before I go much further than that, before I shape the frequencies too much. Um, I'm a bit of, uh, you know, Ollie will probably slap my hands when he sees my show. Um, I'm, I'm a demon for <laughs> getting the speed up nice and fast. Um, you can do that, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, got, I try to go, yeah. So I believe there's now an update on the GUI. You'll see that the, uh, the speed knob will start to go pink. Uh, actually, in the version I'm running, I don't have that. <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll tend to get it fast and then, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll tail that off as, as I feel I don't need it. Um, and again, then it's, it's very program dependent with the detail where you'll go. Um, Ollie, maybe you'll, you, you want to pick up why you would go broad and why we right. would go oh, fine. Yeah. And, and tell, talk us about the, you know, why, why is the detail going pink Ollie and why is the speed going pink? Give us a little bit of insight into that. Right. Um, well, we found that like when tweaking the parameters that if you go too fast, too fast, um, and especially if you have a very bass heavy processing or bass heavy source, I mean, 
uh, it can start doing what a compressor would typically do, which is the, to follow the waveform. It, it starts to crackle a bit if you if you're driving it with like depth has to be around ten to fifteen points too high. So it's a in a way from our perspective, it's a user error. But like you never really do that. But but just to add a warning into the into the fast speed that it's able to to produce something. But that being said, uh, you it's already like a indicator of a gain staging error if you if you ever encounter that. Same with detail is that we found that the very highest detail settings may start on specific audio sources like um, monophonic sources they can start to sound a bit artifacty but but at the same time the detail above nine can be very useful for for example drum overhead so the way i would do drum overheads is to, to push the detail all the way up and speed all the way down uh, you don't have any any like bass heavy sources in in that re range and you want to really target those whistling so there are specific use cases where you want to when venture into these sort of um, not danger zones but sort of uh, attention zones um, in terms of the the default preset and and um, the the parameter ranges overall the 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 basic basic uh, the default of the factory preset is is designed for monophonic instruments mainly vocals so it's a vocal preset already there uh, it has multiple curves under the hood that you're not able to adjust to make it so um once you start yeah, increasing some of the some of the guys on this call, right, have been involved in, in the presets. Sully, I know that, that um, you've you've um, shared some of your presets generously with yeah. the Sound people. You just throw that up, Chris. Yeah, thank you so much. So one of them is the cupped cupped vocal, I think, right? That's yours. Do you want yeah, to tell us what you, you were using that on? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was during beta. I was out with Rage Against the Machine the whole year, and uh, you know, Zach is probably the you know, quintessential 58 cup 58 user you could come across. And, you know, that's part of his sound. And, you know, a lot of guys that do that, you know, like that sound, but there are things that still need dealt with in that, you know, scenario. And, you know, so I probably had the the best case, you know, to, to come up with a preset like that, you know, I got Zach De La Rocha, you know, spitting on a mic as hard as he does. And, you know, soothe just, it, it really just dealt with that mid range, you know, a 58 is kind of got a bit of a, you know, spike in its response at that one, that one six to two K kind of anyways. And then when you cup it, it just opens that up down to like 800, you know, it just gets really obnoxious in the mid range and to have something like this. And there's times where he would let go of the mic and he wouldn't do it. And so you wouldn't want to EQ it and, and then have it sound horrible when he's not cupping it. So soothe just to go after it. And, you know, I have, my motto is don't fix problems by creating new problems and mm -hmm. soothe really helps that, you know, you can just deal with things when they're the issue and it just stays out of the way when they're not an issue. So perfect for that. Yeah. It's almost the issues when he uncups it, right? So it's yeah, exactly. When he lets go of the mic or he's talking between songs and he's, you know, not doing his, his uh, thing, you know, that you, if you've just EQ'd it to work with the cups, you know, use case, now it's now it's horrible and it just sounds awful when he lets go of it and so soothe dealing it when it's a problem and leave it alone when it's not perfect so so robert we're going to be looking forward to your um mandolin and bazooki uh, presets for this <laughs> yeah i'll throw them up there you know i i'll share this one with you and it'll be interesting to see how ollie reacts to this you know when i first got it actually can uh, chris can you share that screen again and i'll just talk through this because, you know, anybody knows me, you know, kind of knows my motto, you know, anything worth doing is worth overdoing. So <laughs> one of the things I did right out of the gate, the very first thing I did was put it right across the mix bus. Wow. And <laughs> what I discovered very quickly is it, it works almost like the ultimate sweetening tool. And my approach is to take uh, the, the high and the low pass focus and roll them up, you know, maybe to 10K, 12K, and then low pass up to about, yeah, right about there, a little lower than that, maybe. And then take the four filters and give them a graduated set of detail and speed. So the purple filter would have the highest speed, highest detail. Next one would have a slightly lower speed and detail and getting lower as you go on. So that when, and, and I would have it all set flat there. So then when just things would just bubble up in the mix, it would just automatically take care of it. It was just this incredible 
it almost felt like limiting, but really, really good sounding limiting, you know. Uh, and you could, you know, just use the uh, the depth of each one of those filters to make each one of them more more sensitive to that range. I, I, I was just blown away how good it worked right out of the gate where I was just like, oh, my gosh, if this is the first thing I'm using it on and getting this kind of thing. So where you have it right now, like if you see the the dips that are going on there, I would have that be in really fine detail and really fast. So it was really just it looked very spiky there, but it, it, it sounded totally natural as long as you keep that up above about a thousand hertz you know it seemed to handle the speed of it really well mm. and i probably wasn't even that deep i mean it was just really tickling it but boy did it make a difference in a big room man i'll tell you wow yeah i, I saw the same thing on my mix bus basically identical settings yeah if we got that so, as a preset all these that in there as a preset we, we definitely need that one in there i'll we'll give you it as a preset it. if you want it for certain yeah if you, if you want it Let's have the, the Robert Scoville mix bus. And the yeah, just a mix bus presets. sweetener, man. I mean, it just works yeah. so great. Very and, cool. it, you know, the coolest thing about it is that you're obviously you're pushing instruments into that. Like when you push up solos and things like that, and you just feel like you got no end to it. It's like, if I keep pushing this up, it's just going to keep getting louder and better sounding. I mean, it's just one of those cool things, right? Don't feel like you got any top to it. <laughs> That's amazing. So, okay, here's here's a sixty four thousand dollar question. I, you know, we've been making a big fuss about this this plugin. We've we've invested a lot of energy and time and money um, as as both companies, Oak Sound and 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 Avid, to to make this available for Life Sound. We spent a lot of research hours and time. And was it worth it? Can you? I mean, can you imagine mixing a show without it, anybody? Uh, you know, is it is it now always in your? Is it now always in your portfolio? MC, let's start with you. Uh, yeah, I mean, you will you can mix it. We we mix shows without it for whatever. But do I want to mix it case. without it? Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do I want to mix it without it? No. 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 I can mix it without it, but do I want to? No. No. It's the same thing when it no, you know uh, when it became available for Pro Tools. It just you just couldn't go on without it anymore. You know, you did it before and you found ways, but. Now you're just like, nope, that's the easiest way to go at this and quickest and less time consuming. Yeah. So exactly. All right. So um, uh, hopefully during all of this, there's there's been a few hundred people in this webinar. They've been asking questions to our experts in real time offline. And and uh if if that you got any further questions that you want to ask the panel directly, you know, about Soothe and, it, and its use, or maybe even about the current shows that they're working on, general questions, and now's your chance to chuck them into the uh, the Q&A window and our uh, our team of people. I think Chant will read them out in a bit, but um, yeah. Um, any last thoughts, Robert Scoville, before we, we move over to the Q&A section of this? Uh, no, I just... Uh... I mean, I'm just so thrilled with it. I, I like, I'm sure Sully and Mark are experiencing the same things. Like the more we use it now, the more you're like, even on your days off, you're thinking, Oh, wait a minute. I got to go try. I got to go try it on this. What, what am I possibly thinking? You know? So it just keeps getting more and more. And then the, and the beautiful thing about it is the more of that, that I use, the less I'm using of other stuff. I find myself unwinding things and relying on soothe to do it. Yeah. Yeah. But now it's supposed to, uh, you know, a lot of other processing. So it's very refreshing for me. And it just sounds the, the best part about it, it just sounds so natural. You know, it doesn't sound processed. Yeah. You know, you're not you're not having to try so hard, right? He's sticking yeah, taking the yeah. kind of stress out of it. Sully, I, I know it was all over your show last night and, and again that was a spectacularly good sounding show. Um um you don't maybe share some of the stuff that you were using it on on the show last night. You were making sure Roger Waters in the round uh in Palazzo. yeah his vocal background vocals the saxophone the, you know everything at the end my symbols my ride symbol you know the the guitar players i mean i have it on I, I, if i if i showed you my plug-in window you'd be like oh this guy likes soothe a lot doesn't he because it's <laughs> everywhere you know and because we're in beta and i'm you know i'm trying to stress it and see what you know if we can trip it you know make it fall over and it can't i've tried you know, as much as I can to really put it through its paces and beat it up. And it just keeps going. What? That's all you got for me? Like, come on, let's go. And it's just amazing. It's, you know, imagining that the show you heard last night without it is 
you know, would it be doable? Yeah, I could do it, but there'd be things that would stick out. The saxophone, you know, like Ollie was saying, you, we clip these mics where we can get them on things instead of where they should mm -hmm. be done. And the sax is a perfect example of that. You know, it's, it's just clipped to the bell and depending on how the user is, you know, biting on the mouthpiece, you can get it really uh, honky and I'm not, you know, there's just so many different things that a saxophone can do that you can't keep up with. Even I, I tried with multi bands in the past and dynamic EQs, and even those can't keep up with it, you know, there's, but soothe with, you know, the capabilities, the speed and the detail, you can, you can really get at these things and make them, you know, be your friend, you know, cause live sound can be your enemy a lot of times and arena concert sound in arenas, obnoxious spaces to, you know, the more you excite these spaces with frequencies that are no good, the more they bite back and come at you harder. And Soothe just makes it really easy to yeah. keep things in check and, and keep the room the way it should be and go home with a great night and successful, making my job easier for sure. Nice. So MC, I'm looking forward to seeing you. Um, and I'm seeing you in LA in a couple of weeks' time, right? At the, uh, the Muse oh, concert. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. The last time I saw music it was a few years ago now, so obviously pre soothed So I'm I'm, in, I'm intrigued to see what you've been doing, which also was an, a stunningly good sounding show, by the way. But um, um, but I'm looking forward to seeing the the two point yeah. version I mean, of it. Yeah, I think the thing with the soothe for me is, uh, I mean, a big thing for me is always, <clears throat> and, and for all of us, is you're trying to retain artistic intention. You know, so for instance, with Muse, there's quite an extreme range of guitar sounds going on and i've always made it my mission to to make sure that that artistic intention is conveyed to the audience and you're not hacking things out that you're not you're not fucking with the, the tone too much you know but but yeah. to make it pal a palatable listen has always been the chap sorry by palatable i mean you know to to make it work at that amplified level and Soothe for me is, has been a great tool for that very thing, retaining artistic intention. I, yeah. You know, examples like both Sully and, and Robert would talk about with acoustic instruments and, and different types of inputs. And I think that's that's a big part of it. From an artistic point of view, we can retain much more of the artist's intention. And that's a huge power. Absolutely. And it's almost like you can put more more energy into it, right? You can have a little bit louder without, you know, without it being so harsh and so ugly. You know, you can you can like yeah. Sally's show was yeah. pumping last night. It was a great volume for a for a rock show, but it, it wasn't it wasn't uncomfortable. It was just Abrasive. powerful and yeah. loud, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, hey, and so I mean, you know, suit 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 has really come along at the right time with where line array is at the moment as well, where yeah. you know. Where, where where we're at suit so, suits so it right arrive at the perfect time for that you know it's funny okay. you say that because you know i i had a i was having a discussion with one of the guys at claire's one uh one of the head engineers at claire the other day talking about this process and thinking man wouldn't that be an incredible process to have as a system processor as part oh. of a system processor you know yeah certainly on the on the outputs the, the yeah. speakers right yeah yeah i mean think about the efficiency gain there oh yeah so how many how many plug it's like 40 or something on any on one hdx card all these are right i'm not making it no it's 54, 54 mono or 36 stereo so it's like three per core of mono or two per per core of stereo that's incredibly efficient and and low latency well yeah it's, it's i think it's 95 samples at 96k the the round trip latency to and back from the hdx card so it's that's uh, just under one millisecond we Stunning. try to make it fast enough for monitoring purposes for in-ear monitors because that sort of approaches the, the hearing threshold of a, of a human being. But but that that was the sort of driving point of of we had it uh, the first beta I think it was two milliseconds of latency. We were already quite glad about it, but then starting to think about it, we we felt like that and it could be cut down one millisecond more, but it just took a lot of more, more work and sort of fiddling yeah. around with with the order of things in the i mean that's hour. stunning that's that's the same kind of latency that we have on just a regular compressor on on our on, yeah. on our, on our yeah, system so yeah it's, it's a sort of same latency that you have on a limiter i guess yeah. so very very cool so listen i'm gonna oh one thing i should say um so this software comes out on april the 4th get my corporate hat on uh comes out on april the 4th um 
the uh, the very very good news is if you're uh, if you own an SXL, um, that we're going to just drop it in your account a one year NFR for free. And if you buy an SXL in the next year, you're going to get one of these for free. So uh, there you go. Thank you for sticking around on the SXL platform. Thank you for owning our products, and uh, that's our our gift to you. Um, uh, so that means if you're a mixer and you don't own an, an SXL. The S that Sooth should be on every desk that you walk up to wherever you are. And if, if you walk up to a desk and it doesn't have Sooth on it, it's because the uh, people don't have a support contract and it's maybe they should think about it. Um, Chant Peck, have you got some questions for us, for the panel? Hey, Rob. Hey, yeah, there's a few that came in. Uh, first of all, the, they wanted to thank Ali for uh, making this plugin for them. Uh, they're looking very much forward to using it on SXL. Uh, you just answered the next one, which is the release date, which is, uh, I believe you said April 4th was release date. I did, date. yeah. Yes. Cool. And the other one was more or less about uses and how uh, the guys here are using them. So I'll start. And uh, whoever wants to jump in and answer that, uh, please do. So uh, one of them is, what other plugins do you commonly use in line with Smooth? And where in the signal chain is Smooth uh, when you use multiple plugins? I mean, personally yeah, speaking, I, yeah, it's, uh, you know, obviously it's program dependent in, but dependent, but like what the chain you would normally use, you can use and you just put soothe on the end of that chain. Um, so it's, it, you don't have to rethink your whole process. Like Roberts alluded to though, is as you get used to using soothe, you find you will maybe use less of those. So in, for instance, in a vocal, if you normally have an EQ and a compressor, you would just have an EQ compressor and Soothe at the end. And as you get used to using Soothe, you may find that you're using less of the EQ or less of the compression. Perfect. Yeah, that answers uh, the next part of that, which is the positioning of the uh, that plugin. Um, the next would be uh, going in line with what you said was... Um, do you find yourself not needing to use multiband compression or dynamic EQ, or is it still used just not as much? And it sounds like it's uh, for you, at least you're not using it quite as heavy handed as you were, were before and smoothing it out with smooth at the end or soothe at the end. Is that the, is that uh, how you use it, Sully? Yeah, I have uh, a couple of places where I started initially with a, with a dynamic EQ and soothe in line. And now, you know, the dynamic EQ used to be trying to trying its best to do what Soothe would do. And so now I'm just using basically instead of really fine detail with the dynamic EQ, now I'm still keeping it in line, but I'm very, very small dips or pushes on things and letting Soothe do the heavy work with the, you know, getting the fine details out of it. Where the dynamic EQ, because with the dynamic EQ, you just set the filter, like say I want 2K is a problem. Where with Soothe, if you tell Soothe to look at 2K, and open the width up, it'll find, you know, as when you sing pitch relative pitch to frequency content, that stuff changes constantly. And so a dynamic EQ can only be set at one filter and then it just hangs out there where soothe goes, okay, I know you told me, look at that 2k, but you got some stuff going on here at one six that I'm going to help you out with as well. And so I find that I'm back in the dynamic EQs off and just letting Sue do the heavy handed stuff. And now I like, like we talked about earlier, we're just shaping sound and, and getting the, you know, the tonality of it the way we want with the other EQs or a dynamic EQ and then letting Sue do the, you know, the hard hitting of things. And because Sue is so transparent, like even when it's really beating hard on something, you can, you could not hear it. It just, it just stays out of the way. And you're like, like Mark says, you know, it's working when you don't notice it. And it's great for that. For sure, yeah. And I, I'm assuming you would kind of concur with that, Robert. Anything you'd like to add to that? Yeah, I, I honestly, I, I got some alternative thinking there. You know, what I've ended up using it on in vocals is actually using it early in the chain, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll do equalization followed by soothe and then into any limiting or compression. And I find that both the limiter and the compressor react way more predictably now. Like it's much easier to set a threshold on it. Once you get it, I'll call it soothed out. Once you get it soothed out, uh, then the the whole processing chain just seems to react better. So that's awesome. Yeah, yeah and I love the use of Sully bringing it up uh, for the uh, into the verb. That's that's fantastic. Yeah, it's I I stole it from Sully after we did the interview. I'm just <laughs> right. Gonna, we, we talked I'll, about I'll that. I'll give a while it to ago. you. 
<laughs> and I did it. And I was like, oh, I am never going back there. Yeah, that's fantastic. So a, a couple of questions. Um, does it affect phase? Do you guys hear anything in terms of phase that's being affected? I do not. I don't hear it. Oli, do you want to talk to that? And naturally, any 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 process, especially if it's an EQ process, does affect phase. It is, to most extent, minimum phase, and it has the sort of uh, the 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 sort of minimum phase processing that we do tends to. What it ends ends up being often is that it's linear. The phase is linear for the for the main peaks of the signal, anyway. So. Yes, it does affect phase, but you shouldn't be able to hear it because the actual sort of the signal itself is masking the phase is, is, is issue itself. So it has a uh, the the mix knob that I personally at least use a lot all the time, which is uh, as mix does. It just mixes dry signal into the the wet signal to to sort of process a bit heavier than I, I would perhaps do without the mix and then just mix it back down a bit. But I, there is no phase issues that I'm aware of because I, that's the, the sort of my recommended way of using it. Okay. Yeah, I, I would add this to that conversation. Oh. <laughs> you froze up there, Robert. Yeah. <laughs> we frozen up. He's, he's, in, he's in a front of house in some stadium someplace, so he's uh, obviously somebody's cut the, yeah. the Wi-Fi. To that question, I mean, it is it is a very transparent plugin. So I, you know, I, I'm sure Robert will hopefully join back in and uh, finish up his thought there. But while we're waiting for that connection to happen, um, has anybody noticed any uh, negative effect on the overall energy uh, when you put it put it across the left right? Um, is there anything that you can think in terms of just like um, weighing the mix down a little bit? And I, I would say no because again, it's very transparent. But that was a question. I guess it would depend how you used it. You know, if you set the depth as far as it go, you could, you know, you could destroy the, the mix bus and it would, you know, everything, if you set it wide band without anything, you know, detail or any of the sensitivities turned up and just had it flat across there and then turn the depth all the way up, you would just, you would get rid of the mix. You, yeah. you definitely can use it to, uh, to go against you. You know, there's like everything that controls are there for your, you know, interpretation of how they should be used. So, Hopefully the, you know, the presets give guys starting points that, that aren't, you know, at the level they think they want to be at to, you know, to decide how it should be used. Uh, but just know if that, if the GUI is, you know, cutting a lot of stuff out, you're, you're getting rid of a lot of audio. That's for sure. So you can, you, you can, that. you can destroy stuff for sure. Robert, did you want to finish up your uh, remark on the phase? Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I cut off till I realized nobody else was moving on screen. I was like, oh, OK. Uh, I was just saying that, that when you have an acoustic instrument where PA system or whatever is creating overtone on it, you know, the, the, the phase of the, that instrument that we're listening to is horrible to be, begin with as a result of that. So if you can use Soothe to take care of that overtone series, the apparent phase of the instrument is better to begin with. So, uh, you know, it, it just helps. It just helps. Absolutely. Very cool. I'll, I'll tell you one thing we didn't touch upon was the was the 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 delta feature, which actually shows you what the you make, uh, uh, sorry allows you to listen to the frequencies that you're affecting. I mean, you want to just throw that for a second, Chris? Did you, did you guys use that? I, I know, Sully. I think you were working with that, right? Yeah, I'm I'm using it as not how it's intended though, as as a parallel process, and you know I'm dynamically uh, adding things to snare drum, crack to snare drum, and those kind of things with it. Uh, you know, if you leave it in Delta, of course, if it's the, if it's on the input that you're listening to, then you'll just hear what it's removing. But if you add it to a signal, you know, it's I guess it would kind of be like a like my own version of spiff a little bit. You know, I'm I'm kind of fake and spiff a little bit. So it's a uh, it could be very artistic as well. It's not it, as well as just being able to tell like what am I attacking on this input? You know, and you're yeah. listening when you click it on Delta, it shows you exactly what it's removing and nothing else. Very cool. I mean, I'll also when we're talking about taking energy out of the mix, I think like like all um, effects units, it's always great to you know set them up and then bypass them just to just double check you are making making it better. Right? It's kind of fundamental, but uh, worth restating. And the last uh, question, real quick for Ollie, are there any plans to bring any other plugins like Spiff to the venue product line? That is a good question, and it remains to be seen. At the moment, we haven't but, planned on anything, but but it's something that we 
we we started in investigating already. So can't promise anything, but it's an interesting idea. Let's get this one out the door and then have that that conversation, right, Ollie? Yeah. You, and me, you and me offline. <laughs> <laughs> that wraps up about all the questions we had, Rob. That's great. Well, I, you know, that's perfect in terms of time. And um, thank you for taking this time out of your busy schedule um, and 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 having this super for me at least super interesting conversation. Uh, we've all actually learned kind of little things from each other. I, I've been. You know, I'm going to listen back to the recording and steal all of your great ideas for my next mix. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> as usual, MC, right? <laughs> um, well, I'm, I'm just going to be suggesting mandolins and banjos left, right, and center, melodicas. And, yeah, there you go. Bring on the bad stuff. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Robert. For for I know you got a hard stop. You got a line check or something. You got to go yeah. to. So, uh, th thanks, man. And Sully, pleasure, man. Great to see you. Thanks for your insights. Really, really important. Ollie, well, you know, we've done a lot of work together the last year. It's been great. And I'll see you in Nam in a couple of weeks' yeah. time. Great Thank seeing all you too. guys. Thanks for the invite in. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ollie. Appreciate the process, man. Yeah. It's just fantastic. Congratulations. Yeah. Thanks for coming, everybody. Yeah. Thanks. Nice one. Yeah. We'll record this. You'll be able to find it on the Avid website um, if you missed it or you want to tell your friends about it. So that's it. Goodbye.